Welcome to Power Driven Diesel. Today, I'm gonna to help you guys get into the flow. We're talking about exhaust manifolds, exhaust flow. All right, guys, sorry for that bit of a cheese ball intro, but honestly, figuring out what to start a video with is pretty hard. I know what I'm gonna talk about. That part's the easy part. Figuring out how to start a video, that's tricky, so that's what you get this time. So today we're talking about manifolds, what they are, what they do, why you might wanna upgrade, things like that. Right here is a stock 12 valve manifold. Now this one we've actually cut up because it's gonna be turned into a, a 4BT, but this is a stock 12 valve manifold. This is a T3 footprint, okay? Most turbos you're gonna get are a T3, uh, a lot are T4. So this is what's a T3, and that's the spacing of the bolts, the size of the holes. T3 pattern right here. So why would a guy wanna upgrade? What reasons do you need to upgrade an uh, exhaust manifold? This right here is a very common upgrade. This is a cast iron, three-piece design. There's 20 different companies who make basically the same version of this. Uh, lots of different companies that do this. So why, why would you go from here and away from this? The probably the biggest reason, in my opinion, is these things shrink. Over time, it's well known that these 12 valve manifolds, as all the heat cycles actually shrink, what happens when they shrink is they will actually break off the ears of your cylinder head. Uh, will my partner, you've seen him on these videos, he went drag racing one time with uh, one of these manifolds and he went, by the time he was done with the race, quarter mile later, he had broken off every single ear, had to replace his whole head. So these are a three piece design. What mean, that means is here is you got three different sections. You have this section, the middle, and this, and they're press fit together. And so these can actually expand and contract. So you're not gonna break off anything if you use one of these guys here. They're very economical, uh, they have a better flow path, they're larger, they're good for power. And so this is, a, this is what most people get, but there is some problems with them. For one, see how big this section is here? All this stuff right here? Every manifold has these for strength. If you get a big turbo, it actually won't fit on this. It'll actually, the, the compressor housing will actually hit this. A lot of guys will actually grind this away and cut it out and make room for that compressor housing. So depending on how big your turbo is and how you orient it, this may or may not work for you. But this is designed to fit a stock size like or an S300 size turbo, and it works on those pretty easy. If you're going bigger than that, you may want to think about something a little bit, a little bit different. Another type of manifold, this is actually a steed speed manifold. This is a totally different design thought concept than this. What steed does, uh, he actually takes two pieces of metal and he puts it on a, in a big uh, CNC mill and he mills out the channels. So take this thing, cut it in half and lay it open you can, and there'll be channels inside that you can actually follow, right? And then he takes those two pieces, puts them together and then he welds it. So you can actually see all these welds. He actually welds these pieces together. So this is actually billet steel, this one is. And the cool thing about this is there's lots of different varieties. These can be really custom made. Since they're not cast, this is a mold, right? So this comes out the same every time. With these, he can make you all kind of stuff. On this one, I had to make me an open volute, and I'll talk about that in a second, but an open volute T3, because I wanted to try an exhaust diverter valve and see if it worked, and you need an open volute for that to work. This one's a T4, a much bigger turbo. So one reason you might switch manifolds is your turbo choice. If you want a T4 turbo, like a, a large S300 S, or, or a medium-sized S400 on your manifold, a T4 is what you want. And you can even get these up to a T6. That's what I have my, my race trucks, a T6 manifold. So for really big chargers, you need some T6. So Steed's nice because you can pretty much make what you want. On these, you'll see both of these have a wastegate port. So what's cool about these, if you're using nitrous or big compound turbos or something like that, you put a, an external wastegate here. An external wastegate is way better than an internal wastegate as far as performance is concerned. The way better flow, better angles. I mean, they, you make a lot more power. There's no real huge power set up out there on an internal wastegate. However, on the street, there are more maintenance. There's more cause potential leaks, you have to, and you have to do some maintenance on them. So there's, there's give and take on that. But on a real high-end competition vehicle, this is what you want. And so this wastegate, you can, it'll divert exhaust away from the turbo, and you can put it into your hot pipe of your big turbo, out in the atmosphere, whatever you want to do. So that's kind of nice where these are integrated. And there's other companies now who offer um, waste gates in the manifolds and uh, so you don't have to use him for that but you can put it wherever you want. You'll notice this one here, this flange is flat. On this one, the flange is angled. This is your stock, your 12 valve angle here. 
So you can really custom make these, it's pretty cool. So moving on over here to the common rail stuff. What I have here is two turbine housings. This is a common rail turbo housing off an HE351. This is a S300 turbine housing, but it looks, it's, it functions the same as like an HX35 off a second gen truck. You'll notice this one is wide open, this one has two holes. What's the purpose of that? So the reason they do this, this is called a, a, a twin scroll, dual vol volute, volute, however you want to say it, all kinds of different words, but there's two things here. So this is a, this divides the exhaust housing in half. This divider goes all the way in, clear to where it enters and meets the exhaust wheel. So the idea is every time you have a cylinder exhaust, that pulse comes through here and goes here. And so if you have an open turbo like this, that pulse is diffused in the whole entire, the whole entire thing. Uh, where, whereas if in here, it's diffused in half the thing. So this, this is really a spool up aid. The purpose of this turbo is to increase spool up time, decrease turbo lag. So on these dual twin scroll, dual value housings, they want the exhaust to hit half of it. So how they plummet, how that all works on a second gen is very natural. The front three cylinders go to this guy, or to this one here, and the back three cylinders go to this guy. So, and they go back and forth, so it pulses the front and the back, the front and the back, it just pulses. That's a little bit harder to do on the common rail ones because the turbo is not in the center of the manifold. Very easy here. So on the common rail manifolds where it's non-divided, it's just open. So on these aftermarket manifolds and this industrial manifold, it actually is divided. The front three go to this one, and the back three do go to that one. So you still get that good pulse hitting the turbo, making it spool quicker. You'll notice this is very small. This is an open value housing, but it's very small compared to like an HX35 housing. And that's, so they, they can still spool it fast because it's small. But if you start going bigger turbos, you'll notice a lot of the T4, all of the Borgwinner T4 and T6 turbos are this design because they want to help it spool up. Maybe not all of them, but you know, the vast majority, the Winslow Finder, that design, so you can help it spool up quicker. So you want to make sure if you have one of these turbos, you don't want a manifold that's open like this. And vice versa, if you have an open manifold, or an open turbo, you probably want an open manifold. One of the advantages, one of the advantages of, of this one, okay, so we know this is better for spool up, this thing cracks, they all, they all crack. You give me a turbo that has 10,000 miles on it, and there's gonna be little cracks in here. If you go really high performance, they'll crack more. And sometimes those cracks actually work their way to the outside. Uh, these, well, there's not that here, don't crack near as often. So, you know, depending on what you're gonna do, you may or may not want that. So that's something to think about. So this is a common rail manifold here. Now this is actually kind of a freak. I don't even know what this is from. I think this is off an industrial application. I got it for mock-up to make turbo kits on. But usually this is open on a common rail manifold like this, they're matched together. In the common rail world, you know, five, nine, six, seven, it's, it's very popular to do what they call a second gen swap. And the reason they do a second gen swap is because this manifold is open and they want to have a, a, a divided manifold like this to run a turbo, an upgraded turbo like this. So if you put an S300 or S400 with a divided T4 or even divided T3, they want that divided manifold. So they, they take this guy off and put this new manifold on. That creates a whole host of upgrades or modifications because now your exhaust location is different, your exhaust outlet's in a different spot, your intercooler tubes are in different spots. So you got to get a new downpipe, new intercooler tubes, probably new oil feed drain and feed line because that's in different spots. So there's a lot of, lot of changes that has to happen. A new air intake, your air intake's not going to work anymore. All that stuff has to happen because you want to get that second gen uh, swap. And a lot of guys believe it's because they flow more. Maybe true, maybe not. But the second, the third gen that's divided, and this, this is a third gen, that's, this is an aftermarket third gen. This one's, you see this is a two piece here. So this can expand and contract. Now I will say, on a common rail head, this is much less important than on a 12 out head. Because when you look at it, there are no ears. The, the metal is it's solid, it's a solid plane where exhaust bolts go into. There's nothing to crack off like on a 12 out head. So not near as big a problem on the, on the common rails as it was in the 12 valves. But still, a little expansion doesn't hurt. So a lot of these will have expansion. Uh, you can do a steed speed, and these are one piece. These, since this is billet steel, uh, they actually machine a little bit bigger pockets, and they let the head move, and, the, and this does stay still. So on these, there's, there's no potential for leaks in the one piece design, but these are not problematic when it comes to leaks. So just, you can say there's potential there. So if you're wanting to upgrade your common rail truck to a S300, 
S400 divided manifold or divided turbo, it's probably a good idea to put a divided manifold on there. It is not absolutely necessary. Actually, on my truck right now, I'm running one of these manifolds non-divided with this housing. So it could spool up quicker if I put on one of these manifolds, but it's not absolutely necessary, but it is a benefit. And so you can actually get like something like this or something like this and put on one of these turbos. And um, really, really, you don't have to second gen swap your trucks to get the advantages of a second gen manifold. The real advantage in the second gen swap is actually the pulse of the manifolds. Um, the flow increase is nice, but the real, the real flow bottleneck is your turbine wheel, not the size of the holes here, okay? So if, even, if this, even if this flows a lot more than this, this is a bottleneck, not this. And so we have made literally 900 horsepower through stock exhaust manifolds that just break, so it's not a good idea. <laughs> so don't do that, but um, you, you, don't, you can. So the bottleneck's here. But you do like to get the spool up characteristics of the, of the dual volute twin scroll housing. There are quite a few different options now for a common rail manifold that puts the turbo in the stock location that has this divided manifold. For me, I like this because it saves you a bunch of money. You don't have to buy a new intake, you don't have to buy a new downpipe, new intercooler tubing. You literally, you can, like, you can put an S300 in place of your stock turbo and use all your stock components and then and then there you go you're running just like a second gen swap so you want something that divides the exhaust that's best case scenario not necessary but best case scenario so now the real question is, is do you get horsepower from upgrading your exhaust manifold that's kind of a tough question to answer i don't think i consider this like in bigger injectors or bigger turbo where it has the capacity to add horsepower I consider this more of a supporting modification. I would not put a giant turbo on a stock manifold. It's going to crack. Um, as the turbos get larger and larger, probably the feed passages in here do make more of a difference. And that's probably more RPM related. If you're going to make a, a truck that can spin 5,000 RPM, you're going to have a big turbo. You're going to need a lot of flow. And one of those, this probably would show a pretty decent restriction. You may actually lose a bunch of power. Or one of these would really open it up. Steve Speed even has different models of runners. This is a standard model. They have a competition model that has larger runners, larger volume here, to really open up that top end performance. So yeah, depending on what you're doing, it may offer performance or it may not. Um, but I still think it's a really good idea, especially on second gen trucks where they're known to crack the ears. It's a big deal. Third gen trucks, I don't think it's as important. Um, I do like a divided manifold though, if I'm gonna upgrade my turbo, because I like that quicker spool but that's not 100% necessary, but I think it's a good idea. In the end though, I think really, there's so many choices out there, it's best to match the manifold to what you're wanting to do with your truck. You can go buy a real expensive manifold, maybe not need it, or maybe you do. So, you know, do some research, call us here at the shop, we'll help you out, and uh, really make sure you get the right one for what you're doing with your truck. Well, I think that's about all I got for you guys on manifolds today. I hope it was interesting, hopefully you learned something. Um, it's not terribly high quality rocket science here, but it is a worthwhile upgrade to think about. All of my trucks have an exhaust manifold. Um, I think it's a worthwhile upgrade for the power that I want to make. And so uh, if you have any questions about manifolds, there's lots of options here and I'd love to help you out. So uh, thanks for watching. As always, please subscribe, help this channel grow, help us get out to more people. Uh, if you have any questions, call us here at the shop. We want to talk with you, leave your comments, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. All right, I'm gonna tell you a little story. This is a true story about me and exhaust manifolds. Um, long time ago, I was building a single turbocharger truck and I had a GT4508. It's a pretty large turbo, not huge, but at the time it was the biggest one I ever ran. And I had a somewhat tight torque converter. Uh, you probably heard me say it's very important to match your torque converter to your turbo. This is when I found out, long time ago. So I had this, this tight torque converter and this big turbo. I had a heck of a time spooling up the line. I'd get on the brakes and I'd you know, hold the brakes and I'd give it some gas and I just could never quite get on top of the charger. I always had to use a little bit of nitrous to get on top of the charger and that worked okay. Then I got one of Steed Speed's new competition manifolds and I actually called and talked to Lean up there. He's the owner and the, the brainchild behind Steed Speed manifolds. And I told him what I was doing. He says, the neat thing about these manifolds, these Steed Speed manifolds, is he has a lot more control over what he can do. He says, we can actually 
you know, it says almost scavenge, you know, as much as you can in a single plane type manifold, but there's things he can do here that are harder to do in, you know, the cast iron type stuff. And so he said, we need to try one of his new, it was new at the time, not new now, uh, competition manifolds that actually had bigger runners and it had some other stuff he's in there was really good. And so I put that manifold on and with no other changes, I actually was able to spool the turbo up at the, up at the line without nitrous. And so it actually, there is differences there. And I don't know if I made more power as a result of that, but it did spool my charger better. So that was really cool. Just kind of a fun story. And ever since then, this is what I, this is what I run on my personal trucks. And, um, but they're expensive, but they're, they're the best in my opinion. But so anyway, just kind of a fun story, a little afterthought I had was thinking about these manifolds is, is uh, yeah, one time I had a, it made a difference. No other changes, wooden spool, wood spool. It's kind of cool.